Hey, welcome back everyone. It is now August 27th of 2020 and ever since the very end of the Skywalker saga, a lot of fans around the world have been very intrigued about the future of the Star Wars franchise by Disney, Lucasfilm, Bob Iger, Bob Chapek, you name it, and exactly what they're about to deliver for the next couple of years and beyond. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, the one thing about Disney Star Wars is that, yes, we do know that they are currently in a phase of damage control and desperation to really get the ball rolling again when it comes to this massive franchise, and that they really are trying their absolute best and doing everything in their power to really bring Star Wars to the same exact level as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which, like I've said, is going to take a lot of time and effort at minimum of three years to have a high success rate between TV shows and movies in a row to really get it to such a level, right? And that's gonna take a lot of, uh, you know, effort. It's gonna take a lot of creativity. It's really most certainly gonna take them playing their cards right by selecting, you know, the right directors and writers for all these different projects. Now, one thing about the Skywalker saga is that we do know that the sequel trilogy had a lot of issues, especially with The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, all because of Lucasfilm's Kathleen Kennedy. However, one trilogy that a lot of fans seem to favor is that, of course, the prequels, right? I, however, am one of them. You know, I will say that when we go ahead and look at the overall Skywalker saga, I will say that I do enjoy the originals and the prequels well above the sequel trilogy movies. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but do the sequels have their moments? They do. But they don't really match up against the other trilogies in my own book. Now, past all of this, what's really intriguing has all to do with Disney's major reset of the prequel trilogy movies. Now, specifically with the Skywalker saga now over, both Disney and Lucasfilm have been fully embraced in developing their new Star Wars films and TV shows for the new universe that is going to be very expansive. Now, it's noted, however, that creators George Lucas, Jon Favreau, and Dave Filoni are all working together as a team in order to deliver a brand new mythology to Star Wars fans. Now, it's explained, however, that Disney is developing a handful of retcons and resets for the Skywalker saga in general. One major retcon is set to take place within the prequel trilogy that is going to be initiated by Bob Chapek, the Disney CEO. However, it's described that one major retcon for the prequels is set to introduce the character of Tor Valum as the true master of Emperor Palpatine and developing the plan with Palpatine to turn Anakin Skywalker to the dark side of the Force. So Tor Valum, in case you guys did not know, is an original villain character meant for the Rise of Skywalker by Colin Trevorrow's version of Episode 9, labeled Duel of the Fates. Now that character was scrapped and they're looking to insert him in some way, shape, or form into the new canon of the prequel trilogy era. Now it's described that this retcon is set to establish next year, in 2022 or 21, next year I should say, that will introduce the, the character of Tor Valum as the true villain of the prequel trilogy films and where it's noted also that the death of Padme Amidala is set to be explained in the retcon of the new Star Wars universe that will reset the prequels that it was Palpatine who drained the life force from Padme Amidala remotely as she was giving birth to both Luke and Leia. Now this reset is set to establish that the Emperor had a hint and of course knew that Luke and Leia were born and decided to keep them alive in hopes of turning them to the dark side once Anakin as Vader begins to turn old. So this is a very interesting in, you know, addition to the prequels, right? The fact that they really are playing more around with Palpatine and the character of Tor Valum. I know a lot of people out there are gonna hate this idea by Disney and I do agree that there are some points that really sound absolutely ridiculous and I, however, believe that the prequel should not be messed with. I mean, I will say that, is that they should really leave things be and just not even touch the prequel trilogy era, the canon that goes along with it, and not rewrite anything at all. Because just by adding in more surprises, it may very well upset a lot of fans. Now, this reset is set to establish that Palpatine specifically let Luke and Leia live and kill, and kill Padme Amidala from afar, once she was no longer needed after giving birth to Luke and Leia, but the flip side to this is that Palpatine figured no Jedi would live past Order 66 that would be able to train Luke and Leia anyway, and it wasn't until A New Hope's era where Kenobi begins to train Luke and sometime before A New Hope that Leia be becomes the princess of Alderaan and leader of the Rebellion in a sense. 
Now, Palpatine would keep the Skywalker twins a secret from Vader for most of his life until Vader crossed paths with his son in The Empire Strikes Back. Not just that, but the prequel's resetting, of course, is also set to establish that Darth Plagueis was still alive in the form of a spirit communicating with Palpatine and teaching him the essence transfer technique during the events of Revenge of the Sith. The spirit of Plagueis is said to be a part of Palpatine at one point in time during the film in this new reset that will be established next year in 2022, or should I say in 21, and also in 2022 followed by that year that will completely change the prequel trilogy in multiple ways for the fans to witness. Now, Additionally, it's described that also the prequels will be reset by use of the character of Anakin Skywalker, where Anakin's character is said to be the creation of Emperor Palpatine, and that Palpatine was the one who actually used the Force to focus on Shmi Skywalker as a vessel to use her to give birth to Anakin Skywalker and that he would have dark side tendencies in life. The character of Tor Valum is said to have instructed Palpatine on how to perform this technique into creating life. Now, you guys may recall some of the Darth Vader comics back in late 2018 that really toyed around with this idea, this vision that Darth Vader has of seeing Palpatine initiating that Force ability right behind Shmi Skywalker, right? showing, you know, Anakin slash Vader what he did. Now, that was a vision, of course, in the comics, and now they actually want to make it a legitimate reason as to why Anakin isn't even, you know, an existing person. Why he's actually even, you know, existing in the first place is all because of Palpatine. They want to root everything back to Palpatine and Tor Valum in this major reset for the prequel trilogy movies. Now, this is a very big deal because this really does dive more so into the Star Wars lore that a lot of fans love and respect, and they don't want to see things go, you know, bad or wrong. You know, when you look at the prequels, I mean, say what you will about them. I know a lot of people out there criticize them. That's fine. But say what you will, the prequels do have their moments, right? It has its strong points. It has its weaknesses. You know, but not like the sequel trilogy, at least in my book. The sequels have more weaknesses than strengths, if you guys want me to be honest. The prequels, however, it seems like it really has a lot, you know, um, things going on in the background. It has a lot of good storytelling, a lot of good character development, and overall, consistency. Something that I feel that the sequel trilogy did not have at all in any way, shape, or form. And I think that's one thing that George Lucas really nailed with the prequels, consistency. You know, really laying the groundwork for the evolution of Anakin, the evolution of the relationship between Anakin and Padme, uh, you know, the devolving of Anakin into becoming Darth Vader. I mean, I love it, it's amazing. So, when we look at everything related to what Disney and Lucasfilm are trying to do, it really seems like that they really are trying to go above and beyond with these retcons. I'm not quite sure how a lot of fans are gonna take this. I, however, am really on the fence about this, on whether or not this is going to be a disaster, or if it's going to be a nice addition by resetting the prequels, by really, you know, introducing all these retcons next year of 2021, and the year after that in 22. So, especially this all has to do with Revenge of the Sith, mostly, that's going to be the big film. Uh, the thing about Padme, you know, dying, in a sense, by the, by the hands of Palpatine from afar, that, I think, in and on itself is going to change how we view that scene and how fans actually watch the entire visions that Anakin is actually having during the events of, you know, the prequel trilogy era. So, the last thing that I think is very important about all of this that a lot of fans need to know is that George Lucas, John Favreau, and Dave Filoni will be calling the shots on how this is going to be executed. This may sound very wrong, you know, in people's minds, but how it's going to be executed is a different story. How it's going to be organized can really make it all the more different than what we are imagining right now of how it's going to be. So we'll have to wait and see in 2021 next year and the year after that on how these retcons are going to affect the prequel trilogy when it comes to fan feedback. So with that being said, guys, you know, drop a comment below. Let me know about all of this in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.